Okay, now for the final-ish, maybe one more part to this, to my bug out pack, but this is the meats of it. Just finished unpacking everything from it, and now I'm sitting here going, great. Unless I go do it for friends, I gotta put all this back and make sure it fits. But I want to start off this one by pointing out, most of the stuff I know, I read. Watch YouTube videos, read blogs, read books. This one here, The Prepper's Blueprint by uh, Tess Pennington, it is a great book. I actually bought one of these. Every member of my family. None of them read it. I think maybe one threw it out. But besides the point, this works great. Buy one. He even sent it to my friend. He said thank you. I think he bought one. I, this is actually my second one. I have another one all highlighted and tabbed and everything. I've been reading this. It works perfect for me. I recommend it for other people. Now for the bug out bag, I split it up into groups. And I'll go through each group. First one is food. Traveling in the bug out bag, you're going to need food. I packed Mountain House. Now they say three days, 72 hours worth of food. There's three Mountain House packets in here. Most people are going, well, that's not enough. It's enough for me. This would be like your dinner. One of these, my wife and I, would be enough for both of us. They say two servings, two and a half servings on this one. One person for one meal should be enough. For two people, it should be close enough. But it's not these. These are these crappy survival bars you can get. They're high calorie. They work in a pinch. They're heavier than three mountain houses. Probably had the same amount of value, but I hate them. Uh, they taste like crap. Chewing on them is annoying. I, I dip them in coffee and hot water, and doing that actually makes them better more for the food oatmeal packets of instant oatmeal are wonderful uh, nothing tastes better than a little bit of oatmeal in the morning especially when it's cold while hiking bugging out anything instant oatmeal packets and in here's coffee tea and hot chocolate packets comfort drinks stuff like that something other than water make you feel better make you feel more comfortable Packing that, it's light, it's easy. There's some of the food. Breakfast and dinner. All you need. Uh, Food-wise, but this requires and that requires hot water and cooking. I have a rocket stove right here with a hobo kit. These are great. This lasts forever. I use these while hiking. And actually, I have a can like this. I've taken three, four times hiking and... I still have it. I haven't used all of it. I've cooked all my dinners with it. Mess kit. Crappy, cheap mess kit. Cooking anything, the oatmeal. These right here, he's got boil water and throw it in it. So boil water and throw it in it. It comes with a measuring cup in here, pot, pan, plate. Also in here, I have uh, soy sauce, hot sauce, and honey packets. Maybe made in China, but I can put those in there. Works great for when I need it. Gets beat up, ding, chuck it. Oh well. Uh, next would be water. You need a way to carry water and filter water. I have a two liter bladder attached inside the pack that I'll show later. But I have two canteens. This right here is a military style canteen with the kidney cup. I recommend getting these. This is probably what I would boil water in cook water in for all my meals um, works perfect that right there this is just a normal water bottle in an insulated bag same as this to keep the water from freezing in colder temperatures must have multiple ways to carry water two canteens and a bladder multiple ways to carry water also refilling filtering this is the survivor filter I have one of these I use while hiking it works great Compared to other friends and whatnot, doesn't leave funny taste, filters the water clean. Uh, their website, go to it, read up on it. They say it does viruses and some bacteria and stuff like that, which is awesome. Not a chemical filter. Um, doesn't filter out like oils and chemicals and stuff like that. So don't use it for runoff, but ponds, swamps, creeks, perfect. 
Also, this is a Survivor straw filter. Backup filter. One is none, two is one, just in case something happens to this, or I gotta quickly scoop up some water. I can screw this onto any water bottle, water bag or bladder if it fits, and filter the water that way. Alright, next would be, now let's go over to sleeping gear and outdoor gear, or well, shelter gear. These all before on top of my pack, sleep mat, helps insulate you from the ground. These are just the cheap foam ones, they're light. You can sit on them while you're resting or relaxing. Sleeping bag, this is a 40 degree cheap sleeping bag. Uh, just a normal square one, no mummy, nothing special, but I've used them, they work well for what they're needed. Um, if it's cold, a bivy. Put your sleeping bag inside this, it should bring that 40 degree sleeping bag down to a zero degree or 20 degree sleeping bag. I've used these before. They're great. They're the foam or packable sleeping bag things. They they just work. Also, this is the Yukon Outfitter uh, Rainfly. Tarp, a covering, quick shelter if you're quickly setting up. Same thing with this, an emergency two-person thermal tent. Comes with a string to set it up, like an bo old Boy Scout tent. Two people in there with the sleeping bags to stay warm. It'll work for what you need it to. A hammock. Yukon Outfitter kit I got came with Yukon Outfitter mosquito net hammocks. Warmer weather, these things are amazing. Take no time to set up. No ground prep work. If it's cold, they're not that good because you're going to freeze your ass off without an underquilt. Tree straps for it. And also, emergency blanket and raincoat. Can double for protecting you from any wet weather with the tarp. Emergency blanket, same thing. Protect you from the weather, help reflect heat back down on you. Not an insulator. Everyone's like, oh, those emergency blankets, they suck, they don't really work. They are meant to reflect your heat back at you. They're not meant to insulate you from the ground. Insulate yourself from the ground, throw this over the top of you, or off to the side of you with your fire. That's what they're meant to do. All right, next thing is flashlights. Glow sticks, one of those wind up flashlights that don't need batteries. This big Mondo spotlight works great. This is also a firefly, it's a lantern. You unscrew it, pull it up, lantern. That's it for flashlights. Also a small camp shovel, lightweight, easy to Quickly dig a hole, bury a fire, whatever you need a small camp shovel for. Like hiking, you need to bring a shovel, dig a hole to crap in. Fire making material. These are fire starter bricks, regular paper matches, storm matches, waterproof matches, normal Bic lighter. And this right here is a, like a flint and steel with cotton and a little bit of like kerosene in this tube here. All of them work, they work great. Uh, multiple, multiple, multiple of this just in case something breaks, you lose something, something gets too soggy. Yeah, you're good with all that. Clothing. Now, the clothing you're wearing will be enough, but like I said, depending where you live, here it's cold. More so than not, and sometimes it's rainy and crappy. Summer is a different story, but fall, spring, winter, all cold, crappy. Snowy, wet, sucky weather. So, they're not my bug out bags. Long underwear. Sleeping, perfect. If it's really, really cold, you're going to want this. It's also the wicking material to help pull moisture away from your body if you're sweating too much so you don't freeze from that. Also, change of wool socks, change of underwear, and a change of t shirt. Polyester, wool, polyester. No cotton. The old jagged of cotton kills. Makes sense. I've used cotton. I do have cotton socks in here. Wear them at night. Uh, wear them while just sitting around waiting for your other socks to dry. Just to generally keep your feet warm if you're not moving or going through wet terrain. This is a face mask that goes around your face and your neck to help keep the wind off. That's it for clothing. I mean, your pants, your long shirt, stuff like that. Jacket you should already be wearing. 
don't need extras of it, just need the extra under layer. And again, gloves, work gloves, winter gloves, wool gloves, wool hat. This all in here is just cold weather stuff. It's got a neck scarf guard, which is wool, all wool. Keeps you warm, might be heavy, but it'll keep you warm and dry. Warm and dry. Those are what you need. Them. And baseball cap. I just grabbed an old camel cap I had. Keep the sun out of your eyes. Keep your baseball caps are just useful. Also, mosquito net. Let's go over the hat, over your face. Anybody that lives in an area that gets normal mosquito and black fly season, mosquito, hat, please. <laughs> and you drive yourself insane without it. I also carry what I call the quick and dirty pandemic kit. The coveralls, the uh, medical face mask and medical gloves. I have five pairs of gloves, three pairs of masks, and only one of these. Also, I carry ski goggles too. This has the hood, goggles, mask. I added this during the Ebola scare. Pandemic stuff I was lacking. Um, Usually you're not going to be able to save yourself too much from a pandemic, but this is just precaution wear. You got to go into an area where there's known diseases, airborne, fluid transfer, whatever. This is great. Also, if you have a medical emergency and you need masks and gloves, there they are. Also, high winds in the winter, good pair of ski goggles. Multi-use. Anyways, if you really want to scare somebody too, Walk around with this, with all the gloves and everything duct taped on, and people don't know what's going on. They're going to think there's some some bad disease, and they're going to be running and screaming. <laughs> they're just leaving you alone because, hmm, something wrong with that person. <laughs> hygiene. This is a big one. This is a thick, big hygiene kit, and this is a lot. Most people like the less too much. Yeah, it's too much, but it's hygiene. Don't want to get sick. Um, where I'm bugging out of is basically countryside with a faraway city. So I'm not bugging out of a city or anything like that. But if you're going to be out long, you're going to need this duct tape wrapped around an old shopper's club card. This right here, Kleenex. This package is a Kleenex. Good to have. I have allergies. Always good to have. Hand sanitizing wet ones. Great for eating, sanitizing anything quickly. It's the liquid ones. Most people tell you not to have them. They drive out fast, but in sealed packages, a little bit of water, they come right back to life. The same thing with these. These are antiseptic white, wet ones. Great to wipe yourself down with if you can't take a shower or anything to keep from rashes or just getting too dirty. Other stuff in here. Aloe gel, minor scrapes, burns, burn cream. Repel 100, DEET, mosquitoes, bugs, ticks. Camp soap. It's soap that works for you and dishes everything. Also got petroleum jelly Vaseline and sunscreen. Don't get burned. And this right here works just as well as the aloe stuff. Also packing bigger wounds or starting fires. I have cotton balls somewhere in another kit, but you can start fires with that easily. Also in here is a sponge scrubby and a sham wow or whatever microfiber towel for washing dishes and that stuff. That is in the main pack. Now as I said before, the pack comes with a detachable day pack. I have other supplies in the detachable day pack that are an essential. I'll be showing that in the next part. Actually, I'm going to do another part because this one's already too long. For the next video coming up here, 